Hello everyone. I'm myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I'm the general medicine educator. So as a part of the continuation of the INI CT series, today's topic for revision will be the gait abnormalities. So before going ahead with the gait abnormalities revision, so please answer this question in the comment section. I will definitely revert to you back. The question is, what is the chromosomal abnormality in the Frederick's ataxia? Chromosome 9, 10, 11, 12. So before going ahead with the session, if you have not subscribed to this particular channel, so don't forget to subscribe, please press on the bell button. So coming ahead with the clinical scenarios, a 65 year old man with festinate shuffling gait. So this is one of the very, very common clinical scenario, uh, which is being asked and which is the clinical scenario, which will be coming across in your clinical practice as well. So I have given you the various neurological conditions. So festinate shuffling gait, it is a characteristic feature of the Parkinson's disease. So how will be this festinate gait and shuffling gait? That will be the individual will be having a stupid posture, right? So you can see that here, a stupid posture. And whenever the individual is walking, there will be reduced arm swing, fixed stoop with reduced arm swing while walking. It is a characteristic festinate gait. And if you take the reflexes of these individual, there will be loss of postural reflexes. So as a result of impairment of the postural reflexes, sufferers are sometimes observed to fall stiffly like a tree without putting their arms out to break the fall. So please remember, because of loss of postural reflexes, these individuals, they have the frequent falls. And let me just give you some of the important single liners related to Parkinsonism. So the characteristic feature in Parkinsonism is the resting tremors. I can say this is the earliest manifestation of Parkinsonism. And the frequency of the tremors is the four to seven heads. And they will have rigidity. So there will be cogwheel rigidity in the upper limbs and lead pipe rigidity will be there in the lower limbs. And followed by that bradykinesia. So that is slowness of movement. So rigidity, akinesia and as well as tremors. So the mnemonic is RAT, which is classical in case of Parkinsonism. And apart from that, I was just now I was telling you the postural reflexes are not preserved. So these patients, they have tendency to topple and they have the festinate gait, micrographia. So if you take the handwriting of these individuals, they will be like small and spidery handwriting and mask like faces. That is nothing but your expressionless faces. That is a characteristic feature in case of Parkinsonism and Parkinsonism. It is a disorder of the extra pyramidal system. The pyramidal tract is not affected. So that is the reason why the deep tendon reflexes are unaltered and as well as the plantar reflex will be flexor response. Why? Because the pyramidal tract involvement will not be there in patients with the Parkinsonism. Now, after having discussed about the festinate gait, let me discuss the another important abnormal gait. A 60 year old woman walks with a dropout foot and high stepping gait shortly after the hip replacement. Okay. So now you have to understand that whenever the individual is undergoing the hip replacement, what is the important post-operative complication? The post-operative complication of the hip replacement is the sciatic nerve injury. It is an important post-operative complication of the hip replacement. And this can result from the direct trauma or the traction of this sciatic nerve. And if you take this sciatic nerve, what is the root value of the sciatic nerve? The root value of the sciatic nerve is L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. And this sciatic nerve, it divides into two important branches. One is the common peroneal nerve and the other one is the tibial nerve. Now, so if you take this gate here, okay, so what do you think is the answer now? The individual has undergone hip replacement. After that, there is high stepage gait. And during hip replacement, okay, what is the very important complication? That is the sciatic nerve injury. And this injury, it might be either due to direct trauma or the traction. And why is this particular high stepage gait whenever there is sciatic nerve injury? 
So what you have to remember is one of the branch of the sciatic nerve that is common peroneal nerve. So when common peroneal nerve is damaged, the individual will develop a dropout foot. So what exactly is the dropout foot? The individual will have inability to lift the front part of the foot off the ground. That is what is your dropout foot. So there is lack of sensation over the lateral leg below the knee. Why is this lack of sensation over the lateral leg below the knee? That is because of this common peroneal nerve injury. So now these patients, because they have dropped foot while walking, what they will do? What they will do to this particular foot? Let me show you. So whenever they are walking, they will have the high stepage gate or foot drop gate. So there will be high stepping gate seen during the swing phase to clear off the floor. And whenever there is like high stepage, there will be ankle that will be in the plantar flexion. And so the individual is unable to do the dorsiflexion. So the ankle will be in a position of the plantar flexion. So this is what is your high stepping gait or foot drop gait. So in our clinical scenario, it is secondary to hip replacement where there will be the sciatic nerve injury. Now you take the third important clinical scenario. Third important clinical scenario is a 65 year old man presents after a stroke with a stiff right leg that drags forward in an arc. So this point is very, very important, right? Drags forward in an arc. So which clinical condition you will have this. So among the options, if you see that is immediately after the stroke. So stroke will result in what the upper motor neuron lesion, right? Stroke will result in upper motor neuron lesion. So in upper motor neuron lesion, what is this stiff right leg called as? This is what is called as the spasticity in upper motor neuron lesion. You will have spasticity. So this particular gate is what is called as the spastic gate. So please remember the stroke, it gives rise to upper motor neuron lesion with weakness in the pyramidal distribution. So upper motor neuron is what it is your pyramidal tract. Now, so this spastic gate that will be in the form of arc. Why you get this in the form of arc? Let me show you. So this is what is nothing but the arc. Okay, this this gate is what is nothing but the arc. So the combination of spasticity in the leg extensors and weakness, which is worse in the flexors of the lower limb, this will give rise to the spastic gate, which is characterized by stiff circum circumducted gate. Right. So this is what is called as circumducted gait. So that is what you will see in case of the upper motor neuron lesion. That is circumducted gait. You will see in case of stroke. Next, you take the fourth important clinical scenario. A broad based high stepping gait in a known alcoholic. Right. So if you take this broad based gait, where do you get this broad based gait? One, you will have this in case of cerebellar lesions that is one important thing and another condition where you can get this broad based high stepage gait is in case of the sensory ataxia now in between these two what should we consider in this question because you have cerebellar ataxia and you also have sensory ataxia in alcoholics what do they develop in alcoholics they develop the sensory ataxia this is a clue here by just seeing the word broad based gait, don't jump on to cerebellar ataxia here. So the individual is a known alcoholic. So these individuals, they develop sensory ataxia. So what exactly happens in sensory ataxia? There will be loss of the proprioception because the peripheral nerves are damaged, right? So there is development of the peripheral neuropathy. So because of peripheral neuropathy, there is loss of the proprioception. Right. So once there is loss of proprioception, the Romberg's test will be positive. But please remember this Romberg's test, which is being positive, is not just pathognomic of the proprioceptive loss. What are the other conditions where the Romberg's test can be positive? Romberg's test can be positive in case of cerebellar lesions. Right. And other conditions where you can have the Romberg's test positive is in bilateral vestibular damage 
right in bilateral vestibular damage so in these two conditions the romberg's test can be positive okay so the answer here is what sensory ataxia now you take the next important clinical scenario a broad based unstable gait with veering to the right side so here it is broad based gait veering to right side and this is what is the classical description of the cerebellar ataxia see in cerebellar diseases affecting one hemisphere like we have right cerebellar hemisphere and as well as left cerebellar hemisphere so for suppose if there is damage to the right cerebellar hemisphere the patient he will tend to veer towards the side of lesion right he will try to lean towards the side of lesion so please remember this is very very important point so cerebellar disease affecting one hemisphere tends to cause the patient to veer towards the side of lesion this is a very very important point that you have to consider towards the side of lesion he will be leaning towards now for suppose if the damage is in the cerebellar midline vermis then the individual will have what is called truncal ataxia then the individual will have what is called truncal ataxia so this truncal ataxia this gives rise to difficulty in standing and even sitting on a stool unsupported that is what is your cerebellar ataxia or cerebellar lesions how will be the features now to summarize all the gates so this is what is cut nothing but your circumduction gate which is nothing but hemiplegic gate parkinsonism or parkinson's disease you get festinate gate cerebellar disease you get broad based gate with veering towards the side of lesion foot drop you will have this in or so this is what is called high step age gate and you will have this in case of common peroneal nerve injury sensory ataxia you will have this as high step age gait and you can have this in peripheral neuropathy right so peripheral neuropathy you can see in alcoholics so any condition which is causing peripheral neuropathy you can have sensory ataxia so having discussed about the various abnormalities of gait so please answer this question in the comment section what is a chromosomal abnormality in frederick's ataxia i'll get back to you on the answer in your comment section once you answer your question so with this i'll wind up this session for more updates on general medicine please follow my channel thank you very much see you tomorrow